TJ here from Comics and Us. I just want to let you guys know that we are in our hiatus season here, which normally means we just release an episode every week that's not that's nothing to do with Batman, but we are actually on an extended hiatus at this point, so there won't be any new episodes. I mean, there was still, you still get the Comic and Us Origins episode every month, the first week of every month, but... Uh, there are no new episodes uh, recorded as of now, so they'll come as they get recorded. It's no longer going to be weekly. It's just whenever they get done. What With that, this is the last of the weekly episodes. Obviously, next week is the first of the month, so you'll get another Comic Snorgen. And every first of the month after that, up until the end of the year, we have that. And there's a few extra side episodes that we have that I'll release along the way, but... Until I can get the other two co-hosts to, you know, get on some kind of a schedule once again, the comics and us will be sporadic. But, so, thanks for listening. I'll talk to you later. Enjoy the episode. Bye. And welcome to episode 123 of Comics and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Chris. And I'm Lumpy. And this is the review show that reviews comics chronologically, kind of. So today, we are in our hiatus episodes, and as with the first episode of all our hiatus episodes, we are going to be covering a PSA today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so far, we've had uh, Spider-Man discuss sexual abuse, we've had Captain America talk to us about asthma, and the importance of seat belts with Supergirl. What are we going to be covering today? What was the importance of what? I don't remember that one. Supergirl and the importance of seat belts. Seat belts. Oh, yep. seat belts. That's right. I do remember that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that one. Today, we are going back to Spider-Man as he takes on the Prodigy. This story is Amazing Spider-Man versus the Prodigy. It was released in 1976. For some reason, there is no month. I don't know why. Because it was at a Planned Parenthood. It wasn't an actual comic. Okay, if you say so. Yeah, that's what it says on the one thing. Yeah, because I'm not seeing there's nothing on the cover either. It just says there was The Amazing Spider-Man vs. Prodigy. This was written by Ann Robinson, penciled by Ross Andrew, inked by Mike Esposito, colored by Janice Cohen, and lettered by Joe Rosen. And yeah, that's it for that. So... We are reading from a scan, because this comic's really hard to find, but whoever scanned it, scanned it backwards. Weirdly so, backwards, though, like the cover first, and then backwards, right? Yeah, then it's like the middle of the story, and then the end of the story, and then it jumps to the first part of the story. Yeah. I, I think we'll cover it how it's supposed to read, but... I would think that makes sense. All right, let's dive into it. Which one of you is want to do the cover? Uh, All right, so you got in big red, it says The Amazing Spider-Man. And then in blue, it says Versus the Prodigy. There's a giant helicopter. It's um, it's red and black. I don't know what it's exactly supposed to be. And I'm very confused at the red button on the side. I'm assuming it's supposed to be a light. It just looks like a button. But it is a huge helicopter, and you have Spider-Man who has attached his web to the the wheels. And there's a word bubble for him that says, This hardly contributes to my jet setter image, but I have to know where this bird is headed. Yeah, this comic is full of pop cultural references. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like things I don't even know what the heck they're the, talking about. Yeah, me too, and I'm like, yeah. this one's like overly pop cultural for some reason. Yeah. Well, they're trying to be hip with the kids at the time, you know. Oh, That's okay. What this is all about. This is like, oh, this I, is like I, the cool, you know. All these cool people are telling you it, things that you should. Be it doing. also don't help that like I was the only one that was born at the time, and I was only two. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else to say about the cover? It's it's drawn okay. I don't think I like it's the it. best drawings I ever seen, but it's it's decently drawn. It de- always looks good though. You notice that it, like it's Spider-Man hard to himself mess him up. Always looks good. Yeah, he always. Looks yes, good. it's decent for a comic that was probably free. 
Oh, exactly. Right, right. Exactly. This was a handout pamphlet, basically, is what I what it looks like to me. It's long for a freebie, though. I was expecting a couple pages. I'm like, when is this thing going to end? I and I, and you know, I was surprised that it was it was shorter than I had expected. But yeah, it is long. Yeah, it's long. All right, so we're gonna dive into this proper. Spider Man doesn't open with a non canon splash page. It actually opens up with a canon splash page. Where does it start? That's what I'm trying to You have to out. scroll all the way down past the. F- it's two. not the facts and stuff? You don't think that's the first page? So go past what the facts are. No, I don't think those are the facts. I think they're at the end. Okay. And if not, we're going to cover them at the end. Right. All right. So. Well, since it's canon, I'll just do it. Stanley presents, and I don't know if this is a typo or not, a special planet parenthood oh. issue of The Amazing Spider-Man. I didn't even notice that. No, I think it's a typo. Because I actually looked up Planet Parenthood to see if that was something different, and I couldn't find anything but Planned Parenthood, so... The, the, the issues discussed in this comic book would definitely fit at a Planned Parenthood, too. That's why it's got to be Planned Parenthood. 100%. Yeah, Planned so Parenthood. I, I guess it's just a typo. <laughs> I didn't even see it. It, it is. 100% a typo. Yeah, I mean... Anyway, so we open up with Batman walking up. Batman? Walking up. Did I say Batman? Batman? Walking up. Batman's walking you said up. Batman. The side of the building. Batman is walking up the side. Uh, of the did building. I say Batman? I mean, that shows you yes, how much you we did. covered. <laughs> that's how much we covered Batman. If that's what I said, I thought I said Spider Man. <laughs> hope you said Batman. And, but I caught myself saying "walking up" when I met crawling up, so I stopped yeah, you myself. Were, you were, I was hoping I should have shut up, and you could have changed it to Batman was crawling up <laughs> instead of walking up. And then we really would have laughed at you. Let it go. <laughs> okay, so. Spider-Man is crawling up the wall talking to himself. Something about a mayor's manor and a party. And he's just, like, being him, talking to himself, because I guess he has no friends. And he uh, sees a helicopter flying. And for some reason, he goes after the the helicopter. And he sees a bunch of teenagers in the middle of the night and getting on a helicopter. And he's like, well... That's strange. Why would these kids... They don't look like they're rich and they should be first class. Why are they getting on this helicopter? Hmm. Strange. Anyway. So. Does, wait, does he say that here or... No, it's a little later. I think. Sorry. I'm just kind of skimming through the... Um, You're looking court. for the spot. Well, it does say... He does yeah, mention there it Dr. J. Huh? He does mention Dr. J. Who's Dr. J? The basketball player, <laughs> Dr. J. Oh, okay. I said, with the help of my web shooters, I can get as far off the ground as I like. Dr. J, eat your heart out. That's what he said. No, I I didn't even catch that one. I'm not even sure who that is. (laughs) But the one I caught, and I don't know who this is either, but Spider-Man makes that. As their kids are getting on a plane, he says, they should be home listening to their new Henry Gross albums. Yeah, I don't know who Henry Gross or Gross is either. I have no idea who that is. We probably (laughs) Somebody's screaming right now. He's a singer. He's a singer. I, I never even caught that one, and I don't know who that well, is. Well, that one feels like it's a plant, like, advertisement or something. Right, right. That's, that's, like, that's, yeah. So I was like, uh, who the hell is Henry Gross? But, okay. I guess we could have looked it up in the time. I am right now. He's an American singer-songwriter <laughs> with his hit song, Shannon. Shannon. What? Okay. I don't even... <laughs> He's from the group Shannon. I don't know who that is either. I know who Shanana is. That's what he. That's what he's from. Yeah, best known for his association with the group Shanana huh. and for his hit song Shannon. Gross I considered a one-hit wonder artist. None of his other songs ever reached the top ten on the Billboard 100. However, his single "Springtime Mama" was a top forty in the summer of 1976, peaking at 37. You know, I saw. Shanana, way after they weren't <laughs> famous anymore, so I probably saw him at Great Adventure in New Jersey. I saw Shanana play at the Great Adventure Arena in New Jersey. <laughs> so, um, fun fact: his one hit, Shannon, a song yeah. written about the death of former Beach Boys member Carl Wilson's dog. Really? Yes. Okay. And that's it for Henry Gross. Yeah, I was about to say, since we spent a lot of time on Henry Gross, like, we should probably get back to this <laughs> PSA, because we didn't even get to the point yet. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we cut over from Spider-Man being curious about that to a manner where these two, like, 
I guess they look like soldiers, but they're, I guess they're just henchmen, are discussing their boss's plan. He's been going all over the country using his special voice powers that we'll get an editor's note in page four for some reason. And uh, he's roboticizing all the teenagers around the country. I don't know if you can hear this, but there's a helicopter going over my house right now. What are the chances that we're reading about kids getting on a helicopter? <laughs> and there's a helicopter flying. Oh, it was loud, too. We didn't it's hear not the first I wish time. we did. Are you hey, it's, prod- first, it's like the third time it went by. Are you in a prodigy, Uncle Chris? <laughs> not until I find out what he's trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we get introduced to the prodigy himself. He is... Like a large head. He actually looks like the leader from the Incredible Hulk. That's what I thought he was. When they, because when we read it backwards and they took his mask off at the end, I thought he was the, I thought he was the leader. Yes, because he's got that big head and he's all green skin. Yeah. But he is not that. He's just an alien that he's dressed up for. And he's about to address the youth on television. To continue his master plan. I don't know if I'm kind of scanning through, seeing if he's explaining it here. Something but. about his voice makes people follow him. Yeah, well, there. Well, I can read the editor's note if you want to know yeah. his backstory. I was going to say, <laughs> it tells you about it. Oh, well, we're going to Prodigy yeah, Origin and yes. PSA at the same time? Wow. Well, I don't know. This is just the narrator <laughs> explaining the origin. Would that count? I don't know. Editor's note. The Prodigy's voice took on its special magnetic powers when the rocket ship coming from its his native planet Intel Intel Intelactia. It's such a bad name. The from the Andromeda Andromeda Galaxy passed through the Earth's ionosphere because of its weak deflector shields. His vocal cords were exposed to intense heat and radiation of on Earth on Earth. His voice drains people, draws people to him like a vacuum cleaner. Why couldn't you just say he is an alien that has voice powers? When <laughs> I don't know why he needed that <laughs> that whole backstory. It was unnecessary, but okay. Well, someone listen, over- it's not it's not his last appearance. So apparently he's gonna so hang around. I was I was gonna get to that in the credits. Okay. See, I won't get to it in the credits. So. Yeah, uh, his backstory is unnecessary. So someone overly thought this story. Let's say that for sure. All right. So he keeps monologuing to himself, and let's let's just get to it. What his master plan is here. So why don't you guys tell us what his master plan is? <laughs> well, um, he's gonna get um, teenagers. All right. What were you gonna say, Lump? With just something. Lump. Nothing. You robot it. Hold on. Did you just? Did it come back to normal now? You ready? Uh, One, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. five yeah, six, you're fine now. Six, seven, oh, that's yeah, weird. You're back now. Was it the helicopter? The helicopter. It might have been. <laughs> weird. That's weird. Okay. All right, get go. Are you ready? <laughs> um, so his plan is to get teenage kids to have unprotected sex so that he can get them to have babies and he can make their babies robots. Is that is that right? Is that the, is that no, the not quite, but it's close. It's close. <laughs> he wants to he wants to use them as slave labor. Yeah, he right. wants to well, be, that's he, he wants to take he wants to take the babies and take them to his planet as slave labor so that all their people on their planet can use their big brains to focus on conquering other planets. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's this plan. <laughs> but like how long does he have to get this plan going? Because he's gonna wait until these babies are like Apparently at least nine months. <laughs> well, nine months and he's gonna have a little baby, and then somebody's gonna have to take care of these babies until they get old enough to be slave labor, right? Unless he can just grow them on his planet. Yeah, I don't right, know. Right, I guess he plans to take them home. But listen, this is a terrible comic. Anyway, <laughs> they're not gonna get into any of that at all. So <laughs> No yeah, I think this... he only mentions it once. This is all just I don't, I don't even know what the word is. Just like so, this word bubble is um, interesting. How I love the way I get them to swallow all the sludge I hand out. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they Imagine really they think to... yeah. you can't get pregnant before you're 15, or the first time you have sex, or if you only do it once in a while. 
So apparently that's what he's telling them. Yes. I just They're think now. it was such a funny, like when I read it, I was like, oh, that's gross. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> the fact, the thing that he says is weird, right? <laughs> yeah. But as he says that, the narrator is like, now, Marvelite, check out whether you've heard any of this before. Yeah. This pernicious pap being peddled. Yeah. Did we hear, I wonder did if they... those were popular words back then, <laughs> pernicious pap. Yeah. So essentially it is like, see? Bad guys say this stuff, even if yeah, some person's no trying to him. tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so he's monologuing and monologuing to himself, telling us his entire plan. And then the kid's lame. And then we cut back to Spider-Man, who is like, he's curious about this. And he's like, should I go do this or should I go home and watch the Waltons? He does say the Waltons. <laughs> <laughs> and then he decides, yeah, all right. So he's he web shoots to the helicopter and... and Takes a ride with it, and he um gets taken to the manor, and he listens into uh, the prodigy's speech here, and he's convincing this room of teenagers to have unprotected sex with things like, well, don't you want to be a man, right, and stuff like that. But there are women in there. Uh, how else can you prove you're a man? How else are you going to get a man? How? <laughs> Uh, is that what he says? How else are you going to yeah, get a man? Yeah. I, I missed that line. Okay. How are you going to prove you're a man? And how else are you going to get a man? Is what he, he says. There you go. Anyway. And so he's having this conversation. Spider's listening. And then the, one of the girls asks, hey, we watch tapes in school to tell us about this. Says, Won't that help? And then another guy's like, yeah, what about VD and getting pregnant? <laughs> And the prodigy's like, uh, don't worry about all that. It's, it's, it's having sex, getting pregnant is good for you. It helps with your hormones and clears up acne. Yeah, yeah why I mean, bother with sex. all that hassle? <laughs> Just have sex is essentially what he's saying. Yeah. The last, Spider-Man talks to himself and then the comic goes back to the, the way to scan. We gotta go all the way back up to the top. Well, I guess I could talk about the last page real quick. Okay, so, I'm scrolling already. Go ahead. You can scroll, but the uh, last, the <laughs> the last, this ends on a um, big three info packet. It's just like you can send it in for one of these three books from Planned Parenthood: the Sex Alphabet, Love and Sex in Plain Language, and Understanding Sex: A Young Person's Guide. This is you an advertising get, for them to make money on this. You get all three for a dollar. Yes, or ninety five cents a piece. Really? Right. Wow. Yeah, so if if you were curious about those. Anyway, we had to scroll all the way back up to the top because someone doesn't know how to scan properly. Just, just so you know, it does say Planned Parenthood on that page, not Planet Parenthood. So. Yeah, I know, I saw. The, <laughs> that's why I was wondering if what that was. Yeah, that's weird. All the way back to the top. This is the way I read it. This is the order I read it in, starting here. Yep, me too. <laughs> so yeah, Spider-Man... Um, listening to it and he's like he wants them to have he wants them to be baby machines changing diapers going nowhere in the dead end jobs wow spider-man yeah. has opinions spider-man's like babies ruin your life we hate babies <laughs> spider-man is right so everybody knows <laughs> spider-man hates babies why do you hate babies <laughs> uh just to be fair to the comic, he does say you have to be. There's nothing wrong with it if you're in love and you take responsibility for it. Blah blah blah. PSA. Yeah. But and if you have babies, you will have to sit at home every night trying to find time and money to go for a movie or buzz out to the burger stand. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so stupid. Anyway, moving on. So yeah, he jumps down from the roof for some reason. I don't know why. And the, this guy's continually with his spiel about... Why has he got such big shoes on? Look how high his shoes are. That's platform yeah. shoes from the 70s. Yeah, platforms. It's the 70s. Bad. Platform shoes, bell bottoms, a tight <laughs> shirt. The jacket's just short of his belly button. This is yeah, the 70s. Is. And he's, he's the prodigy's telling the kids, don't worry about it. Look, in an hour, I'm going to talk to the whole world about all the country retreats all over the world. So I guess he got, like, brothels set up all over the world. Because I guess. Like camps? <laughs> camp? Camp? Unprotected sex? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. And then Spider-Man says galloping gu guacamole. So I'm just going to read that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. And he calls him a dastardly dude, too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dialogue is so corny. <laughs> and 
Anyway, Spider Man decides he's got to do something fast, but he, um, his, as soldiers, I guess they see him as they come around with machine guns, but his Spider Man goes up, so he swings back up to the roof and he says, he's going to pretend to be a gargoyle and they won't never see me because there are gargoyles on top. Technically, they're called grotesque, but that will, that doesn't matter. Anyway, moving on. He's hiding as a gargoyle, but one of the soldiers on the roof says, why are you pretending to be a gargoyle? You stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> Who do you think you're fooling, stupid? <laughs> and then there's a quick fight where Spider-Man kicks a guy, and then the guys run up to him with guns, and then he webs them all. Meanwhile, the prodigy is about to go on TV and talk to the youth of the world. He doesn't want any close-ups, but he wants the, his mic level to be high so that they can hear him. And as he's a, as they go live, Spider-Man jumps in and breaks the table. So his voice doesn't affect Spider-Man? Like, why doesn't he just say, hey, Spider-Man, get out of here? I don't think it's mind control. Oh, it's just, like, draws them to him? I think it's more, like, suggestion. They're, like, your impressionable, like, he's impressive. Yeah, his- people really pay attention to him when he talks. Like, yeah. I think he's got a, almost a commanding voice. Right, it's, like, a charismatic fig- figure to, like, magically so. Like a magical cult leader, essentially. Got it. You got plus five to charisma. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's a D and D joke for those. Of you yes, know. I figured that's what it was. No, anyone wants to know that one. Anyway, uh-huh. so the prodigy uh, gets mad and he swings his microphone at Spider Man, and Spider Man's like, "It's time someone stops you, prodigy!" And he wants the cameras to keep rolling as he. Him and the Prodigy have a fight. The um, Spider-Man's quipping the entire time as the Prodigy tries to kick him, and then there's a punch. But then Spider-Man rips off his mask and reveals that he's in Green Mutant Green thing. Something. Yeah. And See, even then he says, just listen to me for a minute. And ba- Spider-Man's like, no way, I'm not listening to you. Yeah, but he says that, and he's... Your voice is a lethal weapon. Yeah. Right, but it's if it was my control, he would be able to... I've already say, said. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I don't think it's my so. control. And Spider Man says, You're not going to make people robots and stuff like that. But he uh, says, Thanks to the miracle of modern communication, the cameras are still rolling. And everyone's seeing what you really are an ugly alien. So I guess that's that. And Spider Man reveals him for what he is. And he says, You're not going to memorize kids with your destructive propaganda as Spider Man spots cop propaganda. And. Then it ends. Yeah, he stops yeah. the prodigy and he. Spider Man pr- shoots a web down his throat. He, he does. He definitely does. And then he says he poses for the camera and pretends to look pretty. The end. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to say about the story before we jump into the facts? I wish they would explain a little more. <laughs> it was a lot longer than like I, th- I expected. A couple pages. I didn't expect all this. There was a, a lot of work put into it, but they didn't. Wasn't yeah. a lot of detail. It, and. There wasn't much of a story. I don't know. It was... The story is just there. To, yeah, it was weird. It's right. there to propagate the message. That's yeah. all it is. <laughs> so... They have weird facts in the story. I mean, in the... the, the <laughs> we're getting to the facts thing now. But, like, they, they purposely say certain things that were weird. Like, it's what are you, wild. not a man? And, and like, this this next page we're going to read talks about menstruating right away for some reason. <laughs> like, I don't get well, it. Well, let's yeah. dive into it. So, the page after the story ends, I don't know what the actual order is. This is just how no. it's presented on here. Yeah. So, what the facts are about pregnancy. After a girl starts menstruating, pregnancy is possible no matter what her age. Yeah. Pregnancy least likely during a menstrual period, but it can happen even then. Figuring it's weird that they would like say that, like, oh, let's just. Well, I guess people thought they could just do it while they were menstruating. I guess I'm, when look, you're a kid, reg- like fig- figuring safe days in quotation marks usually require medical help. Go ahead, what were we gonna say? About- but when you're in high school, though, like you think about it now, we're adults. We uh, we know this stuff, like, but back. Then when you're a kid, people are trying to, like, peer pressure you, basically. So back then, in the, what they're learning from peer pressure was basically, like, these are the things that people are saying to each other. And we yeah. need to put it out there so that they know that it's not true. Like, I, I get it. It's weird. And it's from the 70s, so it's even weirder. But I just feel like there was other things they could have told them. Well, for, we'll get know. to that. We're going to skip over the rest of the pregnancy thing and get to the other things they discussed here. Yeah. About thoughts. Dreams, thoughts, 
in which it's about sex or natural. Masturbation won't make you insane. Or harm you in any other way. <laughs> it doesn't say it won't make you go blind. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I don't know what. I don't know why they. I guess that was a proper thing in uh, in the day. They were saying it'll make, make you go insane. Crazy? Make yeah, you go insane? I guess. Actually, I was always taught that it was cure insanity. So I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the next topic about homosexuality. Like really. <laughs> The way a person looks or acts is no clue to homosexuality. Having a close friend or being attracted to a person who is who's of the same sex doesn't mean you're a homosexual or ever will be. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Did note the neg- <laughs> negative connotations in there just so everyone's clear. How no, no, no. Actually, to be honest, there's not. I'm surprised that there's not. No, here. there is. Because it's saying, look, who's roboted? Lumpy you roboted. Did for a oh, I did? Yeah. Uh, TJ did. Uh, um, we all did it at different things, I guess. That's weird. No, it's 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 saying here, don't worry if you look at another person, you're not gay. It's okay. You'll never it right. doesn't mean you ever will be. There's negative yeah. connotation to it. it uh, I, yeah, I didn't read it that way. I didn't think it was negative. I mean, maybe it is, but when I read it I didn't think so. I thought it was just, you know, letting you know that it doesn't make you gay if you think that dude's ass looks good. <laughs> that's that's exactly what they, they it is, but they're making it seem like uh, you don't have to worry about it, though. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. As it's, if it's uh, automatically a bad thing is all I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really take it that way, but I get why you would think that. But anyway, about venereal diseases, <laughs> VD. VD won't go away by itself. A doctor can cure it with a few shots. It's possible to catch VD more than once. VD is contagious and can be caught even if you have sex only once. I guess this was before AIDS. It was before they even, like, educated you about the different venereal diseases. It was one generalized VD. Oh, okay. You know, you see, yep. it's like a yeah. VD is, and we're not going to talk about it any more than that. <laughs> That's all you get, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, this is silly. Anyway... About feelings. Having sex doesn't show that a boy is masculine or that a girl is popular. Have, we'll get back to that in a moment. Having sex doesn't necessarily mean a couple's in love. And a boy and a girl who are in love doesn't need to have sex to prove it. There was the, I, in, in my experience, girls who have sex were not really that popular. Were they were, were your guys? I mean, you could make yourself popular, but that was only because everybody knew you were do- you were going to do it if you took them home. You know, well, that's sure, how- with, with the guys, <laughs> but with the girls, they were always kind of shunned. Yeah. After a while, yeah, yeah. So it depends. It depends on it's, what crowd they it, were going with. It was so. mixed. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. mixed. I don't. I don't know. All right, and then finally, about careers, masculine, feminine work roles are changing. Doctors are both men and women, and so are nurses. That's. Dropping out of school at an early age usually leads to a dead end job. Why? What? Why <laughs> does it mention that the work roles are changing? For one, and two, is it that that seventies ain't that far away? Like, is was it that much different that like, oh, doctors can be men and women? Did we not have female I, doctors in the seventies? Like, not a lot of them. I uh, I think you had a lot less. I think it was a lot less common. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. We're but I do we're out of luxury kid, now that. As a kid, nurses was always a, a, a female thing. Like, Females, if I said he was going to yes. be a nurse, you automatically thought he was gay too. You were like, "Uh oh, nurse!" Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was that was always the stigma. I wanted to be a nurse. That's what I wanted to do. So you couldn't do it because then everybody thought you were gay. In the yes, 90s and 90s. no, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't handle college. If we're being realistic. Here, yeah. And then the, there's the last page again. I don't know where this is supposed to be. It says and where to get them. Continuing from all, some other page, but whatever. It says maybe it's not easy to get straight answers without a hassle about things you've got on your mind. Things like changes during teen years, dating, what love is, how VD or pregnancy happened, with what masturbation or homosexuality be. <laughs> and when you don't know about such things. Just asking people can be hard enough. Sometimes when questions seem to upset people, it's because they've jumped to conclusions about what you know and what you're saying. Blah, 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 blah. Go to Planned Parenthood. So I I feel like this was like a paper that was scanned or something. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's part of the comic. But it says, it's it's the next page after the last one I read, because it said what the facts are and and where to get them. 
Oh, facts. okay. But um, gotcha. as growing up, I remember hearing about the Boys and Girls Club of America. I was never part of it, but you don't hear about that anymore. Is that even a thing anymore? Uh, I don't know. It says in your community, Boys and Boys Clubs of America, Family Planning Clinic, Girls Clubs of America, Public Health Clinics. Uh, probably not. Yeah. I mean, because if it's associated with Planned Parenthood, I mean, Planned Parenthood's just struggling to survive, so... All I ever knew about Planned Parenthood was you could walk in and get free condoms off the desk. They always had them on the front counter. If you went and it's condoms, funny you know, you that it. you say that. I know that, but yeah. I never, ever even knew that was a place you could go. Like, oh, I remember really? people telling us, like, that Planned Parenthood... You just go to Planned go, Parenthood, but they weren't, free. like... Right, they weren't everywhere like they made it sound like when we were young. And so, I mean, I'm like, okay, sounds easy. Where the f*** is Planned Parenthood? I guess I gotta go like, get on a bus. I gotta go. get on a bus. Yeah, like, I... I don't know where to go for that. Right. I don't even have a driver's license. How the f*** do I get? I'm going to my pockets with these things and try to hide them from my parents when I get home? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Planned Parenthood it was is targeted a lot because it is place women go for abortions. Right. But it's not just abortions. It's just feminine care in general. So, and there's also or, or anybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. anybody right. who needs help. But it's well, kno- it's well known for feminine care, essentially. Yeah. But that's why you know because of the whole, well, not these days actually, the whole thing's twisted, but turned around. But back before everything happened, you know, abortion was a big thing and targeted abortion clinics and stuff like that. Blah yeah. blah blah. I don't want to get political with all it, so just explain yeah. facts. <laughs> we won't. We can, but we won't. <laughs> In any case, that was Spider-Man versus the Prodigy. It was stupid. What do we got here? What do we got here? I think I have a, a, a list. Yeah. Appearing in... Po- that's Pull of the Prodigy. I guess that's the name of it? Pull of the Prodigy? Because it says Spider-Man uh, versus the Prodigy, Volume 1. Appearing in Pull of the Prodigy. Oh, we're going to go for it anyway. So it's Spider-Man? Uh, well, yeah, I guess and- so, because on, on the... um. First page, the uh, canon yeah. slash page, it does say Pool of the Prodigy. Maybe the comic's called Spider-Man vs. Prodigy, but the story's called Pool of the Prodigy. Uh, well, in it was uh, feature character Spider-Man, the antagonist, first appearance of the Prodigy. It is his origin. However, you say that, but I looked into it, and I can't find him in any other comic book. Really? Yes. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll click it as soon as I'm done here. Locations, Earth. United States of America, New York State, New York City, items, Spider-Man suit, and his web shooters. Let's click that. Prodigy. He's an Earth. Uh, I saw it earlier. Now it's going to take forever to go up here. do to do This is great for podcasting. Earth 616. History. Also appeared in... No? You're right. This is all I said. Yeah. <laughs> I don't... I can't find another comic he's in, so I don't know why that's his first appearance. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Links and reference. Yeah. I can't find another one either. Weird, huh? First, it's so, one appearance of the Prodigy, Earth six sixteen. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Weird. Earth sixteen is the main Marvel continuity, so this is in continuity. So. Okay. So there's a superhero called Prodigy, but it is not the same. Oh, does he? Yeah, no. Does this? Does he have unprotected I think that's sex the... with? Uh... Well, he doesn't have unprotected sex. The Prodigy. <laughs> that's what I was wondering. Was he yeah. going to do it too and, and make babies with these? No, Earth he no. He knows it's a bad thing. That's why he's having them do it. Ah, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I forget what I was going to go with it. Doesn't matter. Story was stupid. Anything else to say about it? Uh, so, um, no, you love- two things to remember. Girls can't get pregnant in hot tubs and usually not in summertime. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's okay. true. Now, you sound like the prodigy. <laughs> you sound like the prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you ever hear about the alligator that decided to have unprotected sex? You ever hear about him? <laughs> he has Gatorades now. He has Gatorades. <laughs> Come on. What about if you have unprotected phone sex? You know what you get? You get hearing aids. <laughs> Come on, they're good. Oh, they made me laugh. Oh, well. I actually... The, the the first one, I was confused. I'm like, how did he get Gatorade out of unprotected sex? He's an alligator. Like, you know, Gatorades. I get it, Gator AIDS, like yeah. AIDS, like the the VD. But yeah, yeah. I heard Gatorade, and I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, I it? got it. I just thought it was stupid. Like the drink Gatorade, I was confused. Yeah, I I got it. You want me to keep going with the unprotected sex joke? <laughs> <laughs> Col- college is like unprotected sex. It's always good until you get tested. 